Hi guys. So I wanted to speak a little bit about the lines. And actually when we speak about the profile, the lines is really what, what makes up a, a large part of our personality. And, and we say, for example, I am a four six. Um, and there's always two uh, numbers. So there is like the outer, the personality, the outer part of us, the conscious part, and then there's the inner part, um, which is called, you know, the soul or the unconscious. And those two are all the time playing with each other. And basically it's the soul that kind of fuels the personality. And that's how we want it, to that's how we want it to be. But when we are kind of too stuck uh, in our personality, we might not listen to the soul. Um, and that is really when we look at the gene keys, that pathway of breakthrough that is from the evolution to the radiance is helping us to break through that veil from the conscious to the unconscious, from the personality to the soul. Um, and a little bit from like the, the doing, the masculine to the being, which is more feminine. Um, and and what we what we want to make sure is that it is a dance between those two parts of us. Um, so that's when we say, when I say that I'm a four six, you know, more and more I'm feeling that the six is kind of it's really fueling my life. It's really kind of who I really am when when I start to embody my soul. Uh, so it's really not that because I'm a four or six, the four is more important than the six. It's really a dance between do, these two parts of myself. And a, a little bit you could say as well that the six is something that, you know, it's kind of the archetype of my soul. Uh, and the four is the role that I'm playing out in, in this lifetime. Um, it's, it's the act that is, it, it's the act that is going back after this lifetime to kind of silence and then I come back as a new personality. So we want to understand that when we speak about the sphere of evolution, which is the personality earth, uh, then we are speaking about what we are learning in this lifetime, that we're taking back, what we're adding to our soul, um, what we are learning. Um, and, and that's why it's, we want to really look at the life's work in the evolution because that's where we could get stuck forever uh, and we don't want to get stuck forever uh, so I want to speak a little bit about uh, those six lines or the, those six personalities to kind of to look at who what what is your line what is your personality in this life what are you here to do and what is your biggest challenge right so when we when we speak about the lines, I really love to use um, the metaphor of a house, and I'm calling it uh, we're calling it the house of the I Ching, and I kind of mix. You could say that I'm mixing human design and the gene keys in the way that I explain this, and it's kind of it's very it's very close to the human design thing, but I. But I do a little bit more. I do connect it to, to the chakras. I do connect it to the body. I take some examples that are a little bit creative because I feel like we understand it better. Then sometimes human design is a little bit kind of stiff and rigid. And I, some people are very left brain and can understand that. But I kind of want to take it back to the body and how it feels and how we can relate to it uh, to really make sure that we tune into to what it is. Uh, so when we speak about the first line in, in the house, this is the personality that's down in the basement. And it's a person that's very creative. It's a person also that is kind of, a, of an entrepreneur, you could say, because it's like one is before two. So it's really about the self and, and empowerment. And it's somebody who can, who can be quite busy with, you know, with their passions uh, and investigate that a lot. It's called the investigator in human design because it is this person that really can get get completely filled up by an idea idea and have to investigate that um, and it's somebody who's here to come up with something new because once you've been in the basement and we tried that you know so many times you have something new you have an innovation and then you come out and you you share that with the world um, and it's also always something that's going to be close to your heart because you spend so much time with it right um, and then we have the second line and the second line is dancer it's, we, that's what we call it and, and it's a person that is uh, on the first floor uh, inside the window and if the first line is a little bit kind of scientific and investigator and kind of wants to know if somebody something works or doesn't work the second line is the opposite it's more kind of flowy it's more kind of natural so the talents that the second line has are innate 
And the dancer is somebody who really kind of want, wants to go about these talents with ease. And the first and the second line are tied to the, to the physical body. So there's something that they are doing. They're like investigating or, or dancing, like, you know, mm, kind of living with your passions for the, for the second line. And um, so let's say we have this dancer and it's going about its own thing. And then people are going to see, oh, wow, you know, how did you, how do you do that? And then, so people are going to knock on the window and ask, like, how do you learn and come with us and, you know, dance with us. And the second line is called the hermit. It's not always really interested in, in, in dancing with somebody else because it might just want to go about the same thing. So that's why you call it the hermit. But then one day what's happening is that the dancer sees somebody walk outside the window that might not necessarily even knock on the window, but the second line knows that that's the dance partner. So then the second line is going to invite this person in and there's going to be this mirroring of, of souls, you could say, and it's going to be this relationship where that is really close, where the second line that kind of is usually just like going about life in, in, in ease and naturalness is going to start mirroring and is going to start understanding more things about them, themselves and and is going to through that relationships actually get, get to know him or herself and then we have the third line and now we are at the third and the fourth line we go from the physical body to the emotional body and the feelings but the third line is in the stair between the first and the second floor and it's somebody going up Mm, going up a step and having an experience there it's all about experience and energy so they go up a step they have an experience uh they go up one more step they meet somebody and that person might say you know stay with me forever but the third line is not necessarily like wanting to do that because they're all about dynamism and all about adventure so then maybe that person's going to be like a little bit angry <laughs> uh, but the third line is really here to experience it's really here to find out what works and what doesn't work and and you know some of the steps are going to be slippery so then the third line falls down but it's a robust person so it's going to be like okay let me get off this dirt and let me walk up again um and and there's kind of a lot of fire. It's a little bit more, again, of this kind of masculine energy. So if the first line is the root chakra and kind of going back to basics, and the second line is, this, is the um, second chakra with the sensuality of the second chakra, the third line is the third chakra with that willpower and that fire. So when you fall, you get up again and you go, um, you go for it. Um, and then we have the fourth line, and then we're still, we still in the feeling realm. So the fourth line is about the heart, um, and it's the person who is on the second floor on the balcony and now when we have gone from the first floor to the second floor of the house it's also a different process uh, because line one two three it's about their own individual experience so they are here to do their own thing They're, the first line investigates for its own sake the second line dances for its own sake the third line place you know with life for its own sake it's an individual process when we go up to the second uh, floor of the house we have the transpersonal individuals that always connect to the other in everything they do and the purpose of living and doing and existing you know and experiencing is all always connected to to the other uh, so the fourth line that's on the balcony ha is connecting to others through the heart and uh, it's all about friendship and, and trust and confidence. So there are going to be people coming to the balcony because the fourth line always expresses from the heart. It speaks from the heart. It sometimes takes the creation of the first line and uses it and start to love it. And then it starts to speak about it. And then people get interested. And then through this, it creates relationship where, where there is trust. When people are going to trust the fourth line. And the fourth line really needs that trust. It really needs those relationships to be, to be nurtured, right? Um, and it's, it's really about living with an open heart. And also we call it in, so yeah, for the third line, what we call it in human design is the martyr, because what it looks like is somebody kind of falls all the time and fails. So the, then we call it the martyr. For the fourth line, we call it the opportunist, because when you have these kinds of relationships, you create a big net, network. And for the fourth line, everything in life kind of comes to you through that network. Uh, so that's why you're called the opportunist. You can just have, you just have to take up the phone and call and then, you know, whatever it is you're trying to have or solve, it's through that. Um, and then we have the fifth line that is on, in the window, kind of as the second line, but on the second floor. 
Uh, and this is a person, if the second line was the physical realm, um, the fifth line is the first of the mental realm. So if we said that the second line had talents with the physical body, maybe dancer, you know, in the flow, the fifth line has the same kind of abilities uh, in the in in the mind with a mental. So it's somebody that's really has an ease with solutions, with what other people feel is complex and complicated. The fifth line has this ability to find practical solutions to that. And it's also somebody, like I said, the second line is the collective, the, the second floor is the collective. So somebody that can really look, if we take just a house, can see all the other lines, can see the first in the basement, the second line on the first floor, the third line in the stairs, the fourth line on the balcony. And they see kind of the mess of the house that everybody is doing their own thing. And then the fifth line can be like, okay, let's organize this house. Let me see how we can do this in, in a practical way. So it's somebody that has a lot of solutions. However, it's a person who kind of sits inside the windows. We don't really see the fifth line. We kind of see the, the, shy, like the, the projection of it and we hear the solutions, but we don't necessarily know the person really well. It's a person that maybe might you know, work with new technology or, or things like that to speak to people. So if you work through the internet, for example, we don't necessarily see the person. We might see an image of the person. It's also a lot of leadership skills in this because when you see all the other lines and you have a voice, we are speaking about the fifth chakra and about that voice that, that it's called a heretic. So somebody who doesn't listen to other people's law is somebody who is here to live, uh, to live their, to speak their own truth. Uh, this is not necessarily the, you know, the, the ultimate truth. It's really something, it's the own truth of the fifth line uh, that, that's going to be spoken. So that's why many, many leaders, you know, they might have their own view and then they could even be hated for that because it's not everybody's view. It's like, it's an own law that the fifth line kind of creates and speaks. Um, and then we have the sixth line and the sixth line is on the roof uh, of the house. And it kind of looks down <laughs> in the house. Uh, and the sixth line has not been on the roof forever. The sixth line, in order to get up, up on the roof, it has to live as a third line for, until the Saturn return. The Saturn return is, 20, is when a person is 28 years, about 30, 28 years. So the first third of, of the life of the sixth line, it's in the stairs. And it's going to do that experience and, and energy thing. And every time it falls down, the, it's, the thing is that since it's a transpersonal uh, profile, um, it's going to feel the other person falling down with it. So after a while, it's kind of, if you're only going about your own thing and you kind of are a third line and you have to like, get up the dirt and you go up again it's like it's, that's okay and you're quite robust the sixth line is not that robust the sixth line is actually a, a quite it's a quite sensitive person in a way that feels a lot and and like it's it's kind of a cellular level um so the sixth line is going to feel every time it falls down it's going to feel the other and that means that after 28 years it feels kind of it feels kind of difficult. It's kind of, I say this often, it's a kitten that you put in a tumble dryer. And after a while, the, kittens, the, the kitten says, I'm tired of this. So it goes up on the roof and it starts to look down at the house. And it sees all the line. And it even sees the fifth line with its own agenda, speaking its own truth. And it's going to say, well, this is not the universal truth. They are just speaking their agenda and their solution in their head. Actually, there is a, there is a much higher vision. And the fifth line, the, the sixth line is already creating you know the the dream or the vision of what's coming and the next house that is going to be built or looking at the next house that that is already somebody else is already building uh, and it, we are calling it we call it the visionary and the role model because basically when it gets up on the roof it can start to do, it can start to actually tap into that wisdom from having been in the house but to be a little bit more objective and to start and to start to to model something of something that is coming. So now we're going to go through a little like what is the risk with all with all these um, with all these personalities. So the sixth line, the risk is that you are this cat up on the roof that was kind of burned when you were down in the house. So you're never gonna you never want to go down again. So you don't want to dip your toe down into that house again and maybe you burned. So you become a bit disincarnate, you become a bit detached, you become a bit maybe arrogant and maybe you like start to judge everybody in the house and you don't want, you don't play anymore. 
uh, and it's kind of this like it's kind of a bit of a resignation or a bit of disappointment on life and then you don't engage fully and you're here to engage like from your cells from your whole you from your whole being and to really be a role model with the people like go down and play uh, and the fifth line seems it speaks its truth it can it, it creates a lot of projection because we don't really see it so there can be a lot of conflict and misunderstanding for the fifth line and creating that and a lot of the life can be can be like that and then there's so much there is so much um complication it's kind of the spaghetti that you make and then you don't put any butter in it and that you have this whole thing about spaghetti you try to take one spaghetti but it's like <laughs> it doesn't work uh so what the fifth line has to do then is kind of just forgive everything um and and forgive themselves too because there can be a lot of guilt um if it if the sixth line is disappointed the fifth line is kind of feeling guilt uh, or blaming others so then it's just about forgiving that and dissolving the guilt and then we have the fourth line and the fourth line is going to have in those relationships that we were speaking about the people who come to the balcony is always going to be somebody that they trust that they weren't supposed to trust um and then when that is that when that breaks when there is a betrayal of some form or an abandonment or a rejection the fourth line is going to feel that really hard and since it's the heart the heart chakra is going to close the heart and it's going to be, become cold and live life in a cold way so a little bit like the six line but it's not like an objective mental cold it's more like a feeling we're in the feeling lines now so it's about closing that heart and not being able uh, to live with an open heart and what the fourth line has to do is to is softness and gentleness and kind of come back to their own heart in in that case and then we have the third line, uh, and what happens with the third line, third line is that it can be shamed. You know, it looks like a martyr. It looks like it's falling down the stairs all the time. And people are trying to trying to say like, "Well, stay with me here, so you don't have to fail all the, all the time." Or can you just stop going up and down the stairs? Can you stop being so active and so inconsistent? That's like a key word for the third line. People think that they are inconsistent. Uh, and then for the third line, it's kind of starting to laugh. It's humor. It's starting to laugh at that inconsistency and kind of accept that life's always going to change and be dynamic if you're a third line. And then we have the second line that kind of sometimes is this, like we say, it's that this natural person that has in, in inherent talents. So for the third and for the second line, in this mirroring of the relationships, when there is a problem, the second line tend to be like, well, on my own, everything is natural, everything is easy. So if there is a problem when I'm with you, it's your fault. So the second line is kind of denying its own part of it. Uh, and what the second line has to start doing is to look at the other and see that as the perfect twin and see that that relating is a way of learning so much about, about themselves. Uh, and that it's a gift to learn more and to be able to grow through relationship. And then we have the first line and the first line, you know, it's, it's the investigator uh, and somebody can be really solitary. Uh, and what happens with the first line is that, you know, it kind of forgets the two-ness. It's one is before two and it kind of creates that life and kind of even like lives only for the creation, but we're human beings. So a little bit like the sixth line, if you don't interact, if you don't mirror yourself in others, you're bypassing a big part of what it is to be human because we grow, we learn, we love through relationships. So the first line is, is about, is really about that. Um, so now we're going to thread back again and we're going to go through that sphere of evolution and see what is the challenge and how do we overcome it. So now we are down in the basement again, we are in the first line and we're going to look at that, at that sphere of evolution. So the first line, like we said, the risk is that it's going to be kind of self-centered and it's not going to include the other. Uh, so the first line, like we said from the beginning, is about self and empowerment. And what the first line what a break out of is, is self-centeredness. Um, so it wants to include others and even start to serve others because what the first line realizes when it includes the other, when it can see that, you know, I can, I can, I can move mountains with, with my, like just by myself. And actually, if I include somebody else, it's even, even better. And to, and to actually a little bit kind of have the patience of that in the beginning to include the other and see how much a relationship 
can actually can actually nurture and can actually be be beautiful and that the creations that are made with the other are actually many times so much richer and then we have the second line and the second line like i said it has this tendency to blame the other and to actually use the other to say okay if you're going to dance i want you to fulfill me <laughs> and i expect this from you so the second line is kind of breaking out of that of that disappointment that the other is not fulfilling them by starting to fulfilling themselves and starting to be i fulfill me first and then when i'm fulfilled i can you know I can, we can mirror each other and we can dance together but i don't expect you to give me something I don't have I do fulfill it in myself first and for the second line relationship is the challenge you know relationships where it happens and it has this it has this passion you know it's about it's about passion it is about marriage in a way because there is a passion when you when you interact in an honest way with the other where there is this mirroring and then we have the third line. So the third line kind of breaks out. Like I said, the third line is somebody who's here for the energy and the experience. And it's somebody that kind of, like I said before, can be shamed. So what happens is that the third line, in order to avoid that, can start to kind of try to tweak their lives so that other people are not going to be angry uh, or like seeking attention or approval so that they can feel that it's okay what they're doing, even if it's not conventional. So what the second, what the third line want to do is to kind of stop having an agenda, like having that agenda. Okay. What I'm doing now, you know, all the time thinking, well, how are other people going to react? The third line is a little bit tricky. It's also called a trickster. So you can, you can look at it and it can look very free, but inside the third line, there can be a lot of that feeling. Okay. You know, everything they do, they're going to, they're still thinking about how other people are going to react. And they, they try to, to seek some kind of approval through that. And that is actually limiting their freedom. So what the third line want to do is kind of just actually accepting uh, and starting to do things without an agenda, like starting to do things that aren't gonna, that are that are not strategized, strategized, strategized um, to for other people to react or not react a certain way. And to be really honest with you know, my life is about experience and energy. And I, this is, I don't really know about tomorrow. I just know that life changes all the time. And they can be a beautiful role model in that, to, to kind of be in that celebration of life. And humor is a part of that, like I was saying before. Um, and then the fourth line, it's, uh, like we were saying, it's about the heart, it's about confidence um, in, in relationships. And what happens is that when the fourth line doesn't feel that safety, they... Um, they can start to feel anxiety. And since it's the heart, when the heart is closed, you feel anxiety. So the fourth line is breaking out the anxiety by actually admitting that they are exaggerating, that their problems are actually quite tiny, and then they come back to love. And this is, this is like, you have a fourth line, and you look at them, and then they have all these friends, and their life probably look really amazing because of the opportunities but the fourth line gets fixed on something that doesn't feel right and then they make a big thing of that and they get stuck on that and it looks like so big but the only thing it has to do is kind of kind of just stop thinking about that and coming back to the heart and then so much opens up for the fifth line we're speaking about this thing of spaghetti where there is like conflict and misunderstanding so the fifth line is here to break out of misunderstandings and, and conflict and actually a lot of that is creating because the fact fifth line is powerful um so it's kind of sometimes it's trying to use its power to prove that they are right and to maybe resolve those conflicts or those misunderstandings but using kind of power to do that is probably just going to create more of it so what the fifth line wants to do is to break out of these misunderstandings by actually using their vulnerability a strength so it's coming back to the vulnerability because the fifth line even if it has a strong voice it's still a soul that is like all the other souls it's not a stronger soul in any way so it's being able to it's kind of this same role model with integrity thing if you're a leader you all you you are like vulnerability is a very beautiful quality of a leader so when the fifth line can tap into that and share from that place it's going to be it's probably not going to be hated, you know, it's probably going to be loved, but it's to be more honest with both the inside and the outside. The, the voice has to match what's on the inside as well. 
And then we have the six line. And, and what happens with the six line is, you know, they kind of go up in the roof, they're disappointed. And they can start to feel like they have to compromise, that that next house that they are seeing, that next dream that they are having, is not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So what the fifth line, the sixth line has to do and wants to do is to break out of, of like that feeling that I have to compromise. It has to come back to his vision. It has to come back to his dream and say, it's possible, we're doing it. And actually surround itself with people and situations where, you, where they see that we're evolving, that we see that we are, we are learning. We are, you know, that's why it's called also, also the teacher because they are here to be a role model and a teacher and to start to actually educate the other lines so that we can go together for that bigger vision. So these are, you know, now we have gone through, first of all, what are the, the, the six lines? Then we went through what is the risk, you know, what is the core wound of, of these six lines? And then now the last thing we did is we go into the sphere of evolution and we look at that breakthrough. So this is, this is what, what, ha, what, how it looks in the, in the holiday profile is that when you do that breakthrough, when you work with that evolution, when I speak about the six line and the breakthrough, it's really that you, that you start to to open up what is your challenge in, in this life. The evolution is the earth in the moment you were born. So you start to open up that. And then the veil to your soul or to the unconscious can open. So then if you look in your profile, you go from the sphere of evolution to the sphere of your radiance, the 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 sun that where there was three months before you were born, which is which is uh, the radiance, the sun of your soul, which is like what you radiates, your aura. It's when you start to, to anchor into your soul, to connect to your soul, to embody your soul, or to align with your soul. Um, so really, this, this break out in the sphere of evolution, it was leads you in to be able to hear the whole being of who you are, not only the wants of the personality, but also you know, the, the intention of the soul. So just with just with kind of knowing the lines and knowing what your tone you could say on the sphere of evolution, you're already you're already so much so much into your prime gift, so much into becoming balanced between your personality and your soul or your conscious and kind of the unconscious that wants to that wants to be included in that that you're you know it's kind of an inner knowing as well that you're inviting. Uh, so you don't you don't need to become an expert of the gene keys and to learn every single gene key and know you know what's the shadow what's the gift what's the city just by knowing the lines of your profile you can you can understand so much and actually when we are looking at the unconscious as well uh, and the lines there you can use these analogies it's still at the same place in in the house so if you are for example a six two you're gonna have you're going to have this um, compromise thing. You're going to have this disappointment. You're going to be on the roof, you know, and you, you so you're somebody who is here to be a visionary in your personal. And then on the soul side, you're a second line, you're a dancer. So your soul is here to dance, to be in flow, to find relationships that are nurturing. So you can, you can use everything that I said uh, on both sides. So, or if you are, for example, a one three, your personality is here to investigate, to be a creator, uh, to include others in, as well in their lives. And then the, their soul is here to experiment and to know what works and what doesn't work. And then that's the combination. So what I, what I was just saying, these lines, you can use them as keynotes for any sphere. So in your in your emotions, for example, if, you, if, you, if you're a third line, then you know that you kind of, you know that you are that person that is a bit inconsistent and, and you don't want to do you don't want to do something emotionally just because you kind of want to want somebody else to not react or or kind of you know cut just because it's uncomfortable like the third line can do just jump to the next step so always in each sphere in your holiday profile you can use the line and understand by understanding where you are in the house you can understand your behavior so without looking at any jinky just looking at the lines, you can already start to thread your profile. And for me, I'm, I'm feeling that many times that's a good way to start. And once we understand the tone and the flavor in each sphere of the holiday profile, we can add the key. And then we get a little bit more detail of, of, what, of what the frequency band and the possibilities are in, in that specific, uh, specific position. 
So I would love comments on this. I would love questions. I would love anything that could be more clear. Uh, so please, please comment and, and please let me know uh, also what you want to hear more of. Because like I said, we only spoke really about the life's work and the evolution. And that is, that's where we start, but there is also so much more. Thank you guys.